Hello everyone, back to skin school. I am so happy to have one of the most amazing upcoming designers or accomplished, I have to say. Um, and one of my chicest, probably chicest friends, Harris Reed. Hi, my love, how are you? I'm fabulous, how are you darling? There you are, glowing, chic as always. Show me your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this. I'm like wearing socks today. I'm like, I had really cute boots on and then I like took them off. I'm sorry. I like those huge big heels you're wearing all the time. You need to show us one of those. You need to show us. They're fabulous. Fabulous like you are. I mean, one can try to do I can take it off the floor. I'm not wearing them, but you know. Yeah, you see? Oh my God. They're awesome. They're awesome. How Thank many you, pairs of shoes do you own? I own quite a bit. I probably like around, actually not that many. I think boots probably around 30. So it's not horrible, but they're all usually by my friends or I like, you know, because these are by me. So like I kind of have a lot of different versions of these and like Swarovski, Cheetah, Zebra, you know, we like fabulous. That's your model. Things. That's your model. That's the one you design and you just make them in all different kinds of fabrics and totally. materials exactly that's cool yeah I, I i thought when i met you it's like that is just so fabulous tell me tell me everything about everything and obviously i want to know how you grew up regarding beauty when did you get into beauty um and you know whatever you did to your hair or skin if you, if you had problems if there was someone influence who influenced you maybe your mom your grandma whoever brought you to beauty and what might have been some problems along the way so we want to know everything everything full scope um I mean it was really funny because actually beauty I've always had a very interesting relationship with it because my mom was a model um, when I, and she kind of stopped modeling when she had me, but so she was always very into makeup and, you know, red lipstick and my mom's Latin. So it was very kind of va va voom, very kind of, I guess, hyper feminine and glamorous. And I think I was always loved that. I remember being very insecure as a kid because I had really bad rosacea, like super red, red cheeks. Um, I had really dry skin. Um, and I remember like, and then I was modeling a lot. So it was always like piling on foundation, piling on, you know, all this kind of makeup and things that weren't very good for my skin. So obviously the more makeup I wore, the more I broke out. Um, and so like for as a kid, like I kind of always had a weird relationship because I would always love myself when I had a bunch of makeup on on set or when I was like even wearing a lot of foundation to school because I was insecure about my skin. And then it was probably only really in like, probably my later adult years, even like, again, meeting you and like your whole team that like actually started getting like a regimen down. But I think for a long time, I really struggled. I think the things that definitely started working for me in my teens were when I was using a lot of just like natural kind of oils. I started using agave a lot. And just before I would like wash my face and then I'd cut open the fresh agave and like rub it all over my face. Um, I probably didn't even know what I was doing, but I was reading a lot of kind of like more homeopathic, more natural stuff. Cause I remember at that time, all my friends as someone who's still quite young were using like proactive and I remember trying to use it and it just completely I mean no no offense to proactive but it ruined my face it was so chemically insane like it was just I kept not finding things that work so when I started using more natural stuff and then also with the makeup I was using started going for like you know less foundation more about eyeshadow more about lipsticks more about pigment and less about covering and clogging the pores um yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of rambling, but it was it was definitely a mixed kind of emotion between the very much glamorous over the top makeup looks and then the really kind of bad skin breaking out from all the bad makeup. Um, and then only really probably in the past five years, you know, using a bunch of natural products, then moving on to, you know, yours and getting like a, like a system that works. I no longer really wear any foundation and I feel like my skin hopefully looks, I mean, I slept for two hours last night because I'm sewing like crazy for a collection, but <laughs> it feels, you know, I feel really like joyous and you know no I fabulous see. but so it you know confidence you know it has so much to do with confidence how skin looks not just what we put on top and you said one really really important thing which is your body or your skin tells you what's good or mm -hmm. bad for your skin you know and you instinctively you know did the right things already you looked into more natural things and you know more coming from you know some 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 natural 
you know, products like what, what you did at that time. But also, mm-hmm. I think when you feel like you, you put something on your skin and your, your face is going crazy and red and dry and like, you know, that is not what I should be putting on my skin. And that's what I want to really say here. Guys, when you put something on your skin and it hurts, it burns, it makes your skin super red, super upset, don't use it. You don't have to go through a time of, oh, I might have to adjust to this product or to that product. Redness and all these burning and and it causes inflammations, all signs of inflammation. Inflammation is so bad for our skin, not just for our skin, but also for our bodies. And, you know, there are different products out there which cause these problems. And the misconception is when you have breakouts to use something which is harsh on your skin and also causes like super dry skin and dries out everything you have. You know, first of all, you you know, engage with your sebum production and your sebum production wants to work against the dryness, number one. Number two, you, um, you know, cause all the other problems, disoriented skin barrier, um, dysfunctions in your skin. So never ever dry out your skin. This is never an option. Even if you have oily skin, even if you have breakouts, never dry out your skin. This is really like one of the most important things we should remember when it comes to skin because you know hydration is the key to functioning skin barrier and a skin which is like disrupted already like with breakouts or um acne you know you don't want to you don't want to punish even more you want to be really good to the skin how can i get you back into balance how can i get you back into you know everything functioning everything smoothing again and that's why you know when you when you maybe started using products which are hydrating and hydration is not the same like oil so oils don't really necessarily give you hydration hydration is a totally different animal and um you know is 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 something is something which is important to do even before bringing lipids to your skin so hydration is something like for example our hyaluronic serum yeah or the super anti-aging serum that is hyaluronic acid and gives you absolute hydration you know and these hyaluronic serums, they are, they're coming as a clarifying serum, exactly. So that is hydration. You see, it's not oily. It's not nothing to do with oils. It's just simply bringing, you know, moisture, hydration to your skin and just keep your skin absolutely, um, you know, skin cells as well. Skin cells are um, situated in our, in our skin. And if they're dehydrated, they, they just crumble like little raisins you know you can compare grapes and raisins so a grape is a hydrated skin cell a raisin is a dehydrated skin cell and you know when they're dehydrated they don't have these osmosogenics to bring on active ingredients inside the cells which is a problem because we want our cells to be violent um, dividing all the time so um, best is really to not forget about hydration and so yeah stay away from all these like harsh products which promise you a lot and did did you have like did you have like a long period with breakouts and acne or just like during your puberty probably a little bit? No, I I think it, I mean everything you said is I mean again we've obviously already spoken a lot before um, knowing each other but I think it's always good for me to hear that because I think I did have acne for so long I think I got it a lot through puberty I'd like you know I'd like so many of my friends quite bad you know cheeks chin especially I started shaving every day as I you know grow facial hair so a lot of irritation constantly and I think for me it was only until you know I met you that I realized exactly what you said that it's not about the drying it out I was so obsessed you know with drying out products and things that were like very intense on spots and things that just ultimately ended up either irritating it more giving some scarring a little bit that you know now is gone through kind of you know taking better care of my skin but it's been something I've I've kind of always had, even, you know, with COVID and wearing masks all the time, really it's been, you know, hyaluronic serum and like cleaning my face, but then rehydrating it and keeping it happy that I've literally noticed almost zero breakouts or before I was kind of putting, you know, um, Jimmy Nova, you know, alcohol-based kind of things to like, oh, dry out the pimple, dry out the pimple, but it just made it more red, more irritated. Um, And because even now as 25, I still get breakouts all the time, but I've now been a lot kinder to my skin and I've been, you know, literally you know, using all your products. And then again, I still do cut open a fresh um, aloe vera and I still do just kind of wipe it all over my face and have a little new face tool I use sometimes too. And then put a little hyaluronic <laughs> and then a bit of night serum and go to bed. Look, 
I know. I just got that yesterday, though. So I've now started replacing it with that. Brand new. Yeah, it's way easier, way better. I use it so much already. I, I'm using it every day. I'm obsessed with it, you know. Um, and I come back to this. I wanted to say one more thing to the idea of, you know, shaving and, you know, the word aftershave. I mean, like, guys shave and then they, like, you know, they put, like, this aftershave on after and it's alcohol it's fragrance it's like all this crazy stuff in it and then you know and then it burns so yeah. what happens when we shave and then or wherever we shave or whatever you know it's like we have to shave sometimes and then if we put like alcohol on top because we think oh we need to disinfect whatever that's a problem because then we dry out this area too and it's already inflamed because we're shaving and we're doing all this kind of stuff so it's already like irritated because shaving is a process of you know roughness on our skin so what we need to do actually um we use the calming serum but also what's really great after shaving is um uh, the, whether the hyaluronic serum or the um the calming serum so the calming serum is actually amazing for after shaving i i even use it on my legs um, after shaving it's so good because it just heals up your skin right away and that's a great product because it just heals inflammation and just helps the healing process after shaving do you did you try that after shaving i actually haven't yet i'm gonna do that now i use the calming serum all the time like for me especially after shoots when i wipe away all the makeup i always put the calming serum on like in the yes i'm like literally like yes in the back, in, like the back of the pack. yes so i'm gonna try that's such a good idea but after shoots, it's like kind of amazing. Also, you know what? Um, I always like you know when I when I when I wear makeup and eye makeup and stuff, I I, I use the you know the, the 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 foaming cleanser. But then you know sometimes you have like such heavy eye makeup and you have like um, you know waterproof mascara and all this kind of stuff. What I do, I use the calming serum, put the calming serum on top everywhere, and then I go with a Q-tip, you know, and I take it very gently off around my eyelashes and everything, and it works so perfectly. I love it. So the calming serum, the calming serum is really um, fantastic for everything which has to do with healing, you know, and the um, the shaving also, you know, if you cause the dryness after shaving, it can lead to razor bumps and stuff because then also when the skin is dry it's like when you see dry earth you know it yeah. has like these li like um how do you call it the the Cut. the cuts the yeah. cuts so and then the bacteria can come in it's the same with the skin so then all mm -hmm. of a sudden you have bacteria in the skin and then it causes like breakouts and you know and oh worse God. i'm excited to try i'm excited to try the calming serum for like i because i i always struggle when i do any kind of makeup, I always have quite intense, even like very waterproof mascara and waterproof eyeliner. And I'm always there scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing. So I'm gonna try using the calming serum because I could so see that being a way to like help remove the makeup. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's I think a good tip to to help with makeup removal, like with like something like the calming serum I love. And the aloe vera is just like, it's so great because I also love to get fresh aloe vera from, from someone and put it in my fridge. But the problem is once you harvest it, the potency goes down, you know, yeah. it's never ever stayed this potent. And what we did with this one, we actually, as soon as it's harvested and it's 95% aloe vera in there, organic aloe vera, it's hand-picked. It's really amazing. And yeah. we, we just make it stable and it stays potent in this, in this, um, how do you call it? Do you call it tube? I always, I I'm like, my English. <laughs> so I should know this as a um, skincare person. I should absolutely know. So anyway, this is um, in my daily usage now. It's just such a perfect summer, summer product and also great after shaving, you know, used after shaving. Is there anything you like to do specifically with it? Because I think with aloe vera, I feel like I'm there's so much you can do. And I've seen you like using it. Like, is there a favorite like thing that you do with it? Like, do you just with like what is your favorite thing? For example, I tell I tell you when when I, I got a massage from um the mother of a friend of mine, and she was so excited and she wanted like a special, special, special massage, and she had like this amazing massage oil from amazing amazing somewhere I don't know so I just had a massage 
I got the worst allergy from this massage oil. You know, the, it was it was itchy everywhere. It was horrible. And then I put the aloe vera on it. It um, went away. It was so great because it cools, it soothes the skin, it helps to bring inflammation down, and it just really helped me with that. But I use it for anything and everything on my kids on you know after you know anything being in the sun you know shaving whatever it's like such a good remedy well i'm gonna be dripping in it now i'm just gonna be literally pouring everyone's gonna see him on instagram <laughs> pumping that amazing tube all over my face <laughs> yeah let me know what you think i want to know but you know um breakouts you know if you if you have the patience also to you know some of us we you know obviously if we see an imperfection on our skin we become absolutely aware of it we look in the mirror all the time just see this one thing or you know it's it's really it's really destroying our lives in a way because we're so self-conscious about it you know and i saw it last year charlie had some breakouts really around her chin which was it really disturbs your life. So, you know, but nevertheless, it's not good to run for the quick fixes and try to, oh, let's fix this overnight. You know, it's it's not possible. I think we really need to get in. And as I said, get the skin back into balance, into functioning, get the hydration back, get, you know, the really good gentle exfoliation with the enzyme cleanser. Do you use the enzyme cleanser? Okay. Okay, I was gonna say the enzyme cleanser was another thing that I was gonna bring up because not only did I have redness on my cheeks, but my arms have always had really bad redness. And yeah. I, last time I got a facial at your fabulous store in, on Mount Street in London, the, the, when the facialist, I was like, oh yeah, my arms are really red. So I started dry brushing with the dry brush, already noticed a difference. But then the enzyme cleanser, I do it twice a week on my arms and it's literally helps them be so, I mean, you can't tell, but they're really like, they're quite soft and lovely now. So like, I'm <laughs> obsessed with the enzyme cleanser and probably use it more on my body. I hope that's okay that I'm doing that, but I'm like obsessed. That is okay, you know what? First of all, I think it, it a little bit goes a long way. So when I take a little powder in my hand and I do my face and I mostly do it in the shower, mm. you can go like, you know, just like whatever you can reach with your arms, just like use it everywhere because it really, the enzyme cleanser is never empty. I swear, it's never, you can't empty it because it lasts forever. It lasts so um, I feel like I have one en- enzyme cleanser forever because you just need to use a tiny tiny bit and it goes a long way and um what what else is your 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 skin routine now what maybe we should talk about what you're using because that is interesting (laughs) oh my god well my well especially like right now because i'm so busy like working on a collection I'm, i'm like shooting almost every day that i have to get it down to about three minutes so i literally wake up first thing i usually do is actually keep this in the fridge like your fabulous facial spray I literally like the high I, I spray this. I usually j I usually like wash my face with this. Then I wash my face with the cleansing foam. Then straight to ha- oh, sh- and then I shave. And then before I was not doing the calming serum, but I'll do the calming serum now. Then a lot of hyaluronic acid because I'm kind of crazy and I just love it. So I'm like face, neck, kind of all of here. I really like to. I always have my chest out. I love a fabulous pussy bow blouse. So always this. Um, and then I put a little bit of the face cream. Um, I think that's, oh, and the, oh, and the glow drops, and then glow drops. I finish it with the glow drops. Oh, and you the, see, I, it's nice. You don't need a lot. <laughs> but I mix it up. <laughs> it's all really good. I mean, because they're all in the same fabulous bottle that sometimes it's glow drops. Sometimes it's the, it's the brightening serum. I kind of go between these two, depending. I like the glow drops if I'm going to an event, because I always put it in my clutch and I'll put it on my nose and on my cheeks, just because I think it has like, not a shimmer, but I don't know, I feel, I feel quite like dewy, I like it. I use the glow drops before every Zoom call, before everything, it's just, it just makes you feel like, okay, I'm ready, it's my, I, I, it became a total habit of mine to just right before something, I, I have to do something, and if it's, you know, going out or whatever, so I always put the glow drops on, I love it. And you know what I also started really um, doing a lot? I, I I like to use the sun drops together with the calming serum. And it okay. gives you an unbelievable glow and the same time protects your skin against the sun. So it's really 
that together. You should try that together, half half. Wait, it's no. insane. Yeah, try it. Try it. Try it. So good. I I, I put it on too. I, I'm on my tenth layer. So you just take a little bit of the calming serum and a little bit of the sun drops, yeah. and then you mix it. I mean, your light is better than mine. Huh? Said your lighting was better than mine. You looked so like glowing. Oh yeah. <laughs> and also, what's great, um, use the product everywhere, not just, not just on your face. Also, decolleté, neck, hands is always for the last little bits. Always think about your hands coming to my age, and then you know <laughs> that was a good choice. <laughs> Oh, look at you. It's cool, no? I do feel like it really did like, but even here, like it really feels really. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm ready it's to go out. So good. Good. Everyone, I'm going out to the market. Like, hello. No mess. You look so glowy. Perfect. So when, you know, when you get like, sometimes little breakouts here and there, whether it's from mask or, you know, whatever's going on, stress, diet, whatever you can always switch up your routine in between like you, you switch up your routine like if you see like breakouts coming you do like the clarifying face mask or you switch to the clarifying cream the clarifying serum and one product i even i have with me all the time is the spot treatment the spot treatment do you have that the tinted spot that. treatment i don't have that you one. don't have that i don't have that one oh I, have my God. Stuff. I have all i'm like live and die by your products but i don't have that one that, that is that is crazy that you don't you you look it's tinted oh my god and it heals up your spots okay well yeah i know i know i know nick yeah, no, literally. I'm just gonna get a call. Our good Nick. friend is gonna get a call. <laughs> yeah, Nick, this is on you. Oh my god, I love. It. Well, I, the good news is though, at least it's an exciting thing for me to use because already just mixing up the hyaluronic acid, the glow drops, the calming serum, I've already noticed completely a difference in my skin. So now, if I just know that I need to get the spot treatment, it's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be the perfect like everything. So also, you have a perfect body. I mean. Just tell us about your workout, diet, whatever it is. Tell us your secrets. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, I, well, thank you. I'll take that. I mean, I think it's, it's <laughs> coming from like LA and the fact that, you know, for me, you know, things being fresh from farmers markets, organic, you know, everything we've already heard, I think, you know, in London, it's a city, it's, I'm really busy kind of all the time. So it's a lot of, you know, smoothies in the morning. Like I got really into juicing celery lately. I've gotten really into like, you know, giant giants of glasses of celery, um, a lot of kind of bone broth, like, mm. like bone broth from like, you know, whole foods or like sweet green. Um, and then I just, I try to eat healthy. I'm really bad. I love pizza and stuff, but like, I do try to stay away from greasy food because, you know, like you said, with the, like, Skin, it's obviously a direct you know if i if i eat horrible food for a week i immediately notice that i'm more red my skin's a bit oily and not in a good way so i really try to kind of mix it up i mean and i'm really into pilates i know that's probably a bit basic but i love reformer pilates it like really just helps me i don't know i love pilates i love it i love pilates do you do it like every day i do it i try to do it every other day yeah, me too. Every other day, sometimes every day, depending on how much time I have, because I like to do it in the morning, the first thing in the morning. Otherwise, my day slips away and then I'm not able to do it anymore. But I love it. Which ones do you do? I do the reformer. I literally do the most. I always do the classic reformer Pilates. I started doing like one, like in London, we had like a mix that was like a reformer Pilates Zumba situation where we had like this ball and we were and like it was just too much for me like I, I always do <laughs> class and I'm surrounded by these like women in their 50s who have had four kids and they're doing an amazing job and I'm literally like shaking on the reformer so I do the very basic easy but like you said it's the first thing I do when I wake up it's like juice full glass of lemon water go straight to the Pilates class do the thing take my shower, then do my beauty routine, go about the day, like try to, so like I think it just sets you in the right, like kind of the right mental headspace. No, that's good. But you know, with Pilates, it's also important that you take your time for all the moves because you have to make the moves right. 
otherwise you can always, also cause problems with your with your you know system body and you know spine you know you need to be really focusing on it i i, I agree don't make it too crazy i you know because i'm traveling so much so i cannot just go to one place all the time i have a really great place in la and there i did it like two three times so it was so fantastic and now i have to do it like on the computer, but I do the class with Melissa Woodhill. And that really helps me so much just to do like half an hour here and there. It's, it's really, it's really good. I, I agree. Pilates is, is a good, is a good one. And diet. Yeah. Yeah. You're fresh, fresh organic. I think it's also good to eat a local and seasoned food and mm -hmm. find a place where you trust best on the farmer's market. You know, when I'm at home in Dusseldorf, I go only to the farmers i don't i never go into really into got everything i need right there it's it's you know for me it feels feels like the best to give what's in season what i can find and not what gets shipped like you know right. from wherever so i think that's a good policy you know sometimes also simple food simple sometimes you know if you find really great tomatoes and a good olive oil and sea salt and a good fresh beautiful german bread i know it's you know not always the gluten-free one although that would be better <laughs> but um that could al already be such a great such a great um, meal you know doesn't always need to be like fancy stuff no i totally agree i mean I, i'm the same like i'm not gluten-free i probably should like i probably should be better but i do think you know i always get a local like a bread for my local like you know, bread guy, yeah. and I like a good sourdough bread with like fresh tomatoes and like some olive oil or just olive oil and bread. It's kind of like, I don't I just think like you said, it's, when, it's season, when it's like local, it's like, I mean, bread's always in season, but you know, vegetables. What's your favorite restaurant in London? Autolinghi. Which is that? What is that? Autolinghi. Which one? It's like, it's like Autolinghi. They have it in like. I never went there. You've never gone there? It's amazing. They have like a cookbook. It's all like fresh. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. We have to, we have to cookbook. We have yeah. two of the cookbooks. It's amazing. The recipes in there are amazing. Like oh my God. I yeah, of course. But I never went to the restaurant. The restaurant's amazing. Okay. We do it when I come to London. You take me. Okay. You take me. Go. It's like fabulous. We do it. We, we do it. That's a done deal. Anything you learned from your ma? mom or grandma regarding beauty anything what what were they like my mom what i learned from her was wear sunscreen wear a lot of sunscreen and i think as well like she kind of always taught me i think when i was younger to always not always wash my face but make sure you know in the morning wash your face really well you know use a good quality you know at the time cleanser use a really good you know cream but i think her main thing was like sunscreen and wearing a lot of kind of hats and being just more kind of kind to my skin because my father was always you know super english outside burning always burning always burning and now he has a lot of like melanoma issues and things that he was always doing oh wow later issues with his skin where my mother was always very good about kind of keeping her skin protected and same with my grandmother and hands hi keeping like um hydrating your hands and taking care of them especially as someone who sews all day and gets you know needles stuck in them yeah yeah, yeah yeah you get like I use the rich, I use the anti-aging hand cream. It's always in my bag. How actually, good is that? It's my, I have to say that's actually probably one of my favorite products because also the hand sanitizer, which I use, you know, everywhere in places dries your hands out so bad. So I'm always with the, you know, the Sturm anti-aging hand cream. And it literally is my saving grace because, you know, most of the stuff I do, I love rings. I love jewelry. And there's nothing worse than having like cracked. I mean, I'm still young, but cracked hands and it's not, not cute. <laughs> Now this cream is amazing. The hand cream I worked on for four years or so. It wasn't, it was never good enough. And then when it was good enough, we're like, oh my God, we actually made it. It's such a good hand cream because it goes right into your hands and it gives you a glow. It's very interesting. You know, where you, you, you wouldn't even, you don't even request a glow for your hands, but it's happening, right? I mean, but you need it though with Zoom and stuff. And I feel like I talk with my hands so much and all my model actors yeah. all do this and we're always like you know I'm always touching my face it's important that it just it all just glows it's all a glow yeah gorgeous gorgeous should we dial in some people um should is there anyone who wants to talk to us or are we chatting away more yes yeah, so we should have Anna on the line 
Anna, if you want to just oh. unmute yourself. Hello. Hi, Anna. Hi, Anna. Should I put the video as well? Yes. I guess it's yes. Hi. Hi. How, How are, are you? you? Hello. <laughs> nice to meet I'm you. Good. Thank you. Thank you for talking to me. Of course. How's it going? Where are you? I am in Prague. In Prague, I've been to Prague. It's beautiful, beautiful city. And where are you located? Um, I'm located in Germany and Harris is located in London. All right, nice. So do I shoot my questions? Yes. <laughs> right, so I don't know if you want to know anything about me uh, but my question is about large pores, which I never had before, but as I'm getting older, I'm 45 now, it seems that they are getting larger or perhaps uh, it was the lockdown sitting in front of the screen all the time. I'm not quite sure what it is, but when you put the makeup on, it doesn't look as good as it used to. So I wanted to ask about uh, what is the best product for it. And also, I seem to have like always this area slightly more red. And I did use your mask and I think it did improve. But I only bought your products um, sometimes in May. And I'm not um, so familiar with them yet. So I just wonder if there's something for the pores that it could improve the skin or is it just good cleansing? What would it be? So that is a really good question. And you already like, you know, talked about one thing because we all sit in front of our screens so much and we overlook the fact that the screens radiate a light. Yeah, they radiate. Um, in light in a certain wavelength and that's called HEV light or blue light or digital light yeah but it's coming towards us it's not the same wavelength like the sunlight but it has also quite aggressive radiation coming and targeting our skin and it causes inflammation in our skin so that could be one reason why you get red you know the inflammation makes our skin red also it um, tends to dry out our skin much more so our skin gets more dry when we are in front of the light so what's absolutely um, important um, is to use the anti-pollution drops yeah and especially when we work in front of the screens the anti-pollution is basically a hyaluronic serum and it has ingredients to block out pollution but also the HEV light coming from the phones so you just take the anti-pollution drops and put it on your skin and at the same time it hydrates your skin you know it just gives hydration same time like it protected um from from the screens that's the one thing the other thing i don't know which products you have do you have the enzyme cleanser yes i bought the body set which includes yes. the enzyme cleanser and i bought the pollution serum and the spf factor and and the, and the facial mask but I'm slightly confused. So I get up, I cleanse my face, I, and then I put, I mix the pollution serum with my cream and I put it on and I don't do anything else. Is that, am I right? Or if I so, go out. So you, 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 you use the anti-pollution serum before you use the cream. Yeah. Uh -huh. The anti-pollution drops, put it on and then Next step, you put your face cream on, okay? So yeah. you get and the hydration the first cream. and the eye cream, perfect. And then, twi you, do you use the enzyme cleanser every morning? No. 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 So the enzyme cleanser, the powder, you only use twice a week. Yes. Yes, twice a week. So it's actually great. You use the enzyme cleanser twice a week. You use the anti-pollution drops in the face cream. It's actually, and the eye cream, it's actually a good routine that could be really as simple as you're doing it. And it's anti-aging and it helps to get your skin in balance. Um, it would be good if you only stick to that. Don't, you know, you know, I don't know if you use Retin-A or anything or some other, no. So you're really, that's a simple routine, but it's perfect. And at night, it would be good to have the foam cleanser 
So with the foam cleanser, you cleanse your skin at night. And then maybe um, you, can, you can also use the anti-pollution drops or you get a hyaluronic serum or a super anti-aging serum. Yeah, the super anti-aging serum is also good. Or maybe even better, the clarifying serum. Use the clarifying serum because it helps with your sebum production, helps to really help to, you know, um, help I'm with the pore sizes. Things. So the clarifying serum maybe would be even better for you. Right, so these yes. are the night products. These are what? Uh, they, these are the night products. That was one of my questions. So the night products, I would suggest that you get still the clarifying serum and um, you use the, in the morning, you can use the anti-pollution drops or you start with the clarifying serum, the anti-pollution drops, and then your face cream and eye cream. And in the evening, you use the clarifying serum and your face cream. Right. And no hyaluronic or no anti-aging. So, so the clarifying serum is also hyaluronic serum. They're all hyaluronic serum based. So you get your hydration. I personally use the super anti-aging serum in the evening. Yeah. Or also, also the night serum. These are great to also give optimal hydration, but also ingredients science to help to repair from UV damage, help to rebuild collagen, like all these like anti-aging benefits you want to maybe also add to your routine, you know, to prevent, you know, the signs of aging and help to keep your skin a little more firm and, 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 and hydrated. So you can just like maybe do that and add those to your routine, the super anti-aging serum and the night serum. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, if you keep doing this routine, it will help with your pore sizes too, because your pores will regulate. Pores is not a thing of doing one thing. Pore size is a system, it's something you do on the long run. Harris, what do you think? Is this is something you had always had any concerns at one point with pore sizes, or was was this never part of you know your journey? I definitely noticed more kind of pore sizes when I was doing a lot of kind of makeup and foundation. I, I noticed more, I think they were getting more clogged. And then I think the more that I kind of stuck to the routine of kind of the products and actually stopped we wearing a lot less makeup. I don't know if they got smaller. Maybe they did. I just don't notice them as much anymore because they're no longer clogged or filled with anything. Um, so I've, I think like, again, because my skin was less red, was less irritated, especially same. I would always get a lot of redness around like my nose and here with masks. But now that I, you know, if I, if I keep keeping it hyaluronic acid, again, different skin, but, you know, quite happy, I didn't know, I felt that my pores, I couldn't notice them as much, I guess. If that you see, that is a good point. That is a really good point because um, you just mentioned that you use a lot of makeup and, I, you know, if you use so much makeup, it actually gets also stuck in your pores. And then you also, you know, if you use the makeup, it's, it's nice, you know, if you get, get you know, use the foam cleanser to, to, to really um, take it off. Then I also would probably add the balancing toner and tone your skin. And if you can, you know, if um, your skin improves, maybe it's then a good time to, to, to not use the makeup anymore because makeup is not great for our skin. It, it does clog pores. Hmm, that can be my, my case as well. <laughs> and you're such a natural beauty. So I'm sure skin looks fantastic on you. And do you have, uh, Barbara, do you have like days that, you know, oh, today's Monday and today's Thursday, I will use the enzyme cleanser to, because I cannot get my head around it. How, yeah. you know, hey, like which day did I do it last time? <laughs> it's such a, it's such a good question, actually. And, and you know what? I absolutely agree. You know, you, maybe you, you set the two days in the week, you know, the, the whatever, like, maybe you do Monday and Friday or Tuesday and Friday and you just set your days or I actually do it out of my stomach feeling. So I always have the product in the shower. And so I like kind of, you know, how depends on how much time I have, you know, in which mood I am. Do I want to do this extra step right now? And I, mm -hmm. I do it like out of my stomach a little bit, you know, I'm not like very, functional about you know sometimes I only use it once a week sometimes I don't use it at all you know it really depends I'm not I'm not being too crazy in you know doing it exactly right sometimes also I 
What I always use every day, every morning, every night is my hyaluronic cream with face cream. No way around it. I never, sorry, what, I sorry, never say, which hmm? one do you not skip? Which one do you not skip? Every, every day, every morning, every night, I use my hyaluronic serum and my face cream. Always. These two products, I cannot live without. I always, every morning, every night, I cannot even not use the hyaluronic serum because then I'm like, it's, it's, it's so in me. But then other products, you know, the calming serum I use one day, I use then the calming serum, the good C, or at night, I also... I sometimes only use the night serum, not the super anti-aging serum, but the, you know, it's also hyaluronic acid based, you know? So I, I trick myself sometimes, but the best thing is really for me to use the super anti-aging serum, then the night serum, then the face cream. It depends how much patience you have to spend on your, on your skin, on your face that, mm -hmm. that night. And when, you, but you, when it comes to, sorry. No, you go ahead. When it comes to scrub, and and the enzyme cleanser. Which one do you use first? Do you use one? You see and that you you whether use the one or the other. You don't use it both. I what I do. I like to alternate. Sometimes I like to use the scrub. Sometimes I like to use the enzyme cleanser. It really depends. I like both a lot, so I cannot make up my mind if I only want to use the one or the other. So if you have both, try both. They're really really great. Right. Okay. I don't know if I should give time to some other people to ask questions. So I, I think I am grateful for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yes. And good luck you. with everything. Pleasure. If you have more questions, um, you can also, uh, my team will get in touch with you. You can schedule a FaceTime consultation and we can get you totally situated. Oh, wow. Thank you. Yes, we do it. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs> Bye, Anna. Bye. I like hairs that you don't use makeup anymore or just sometimes. I think it's such a good move, you know? I think lots of people, they go away from using makeup and just really like to show skin. And it's such a great, I think it's like a shift. Do you do you think no, that's true? I totally agree. And like, I think what I actually bonded on like Anna about a little bit was like, you know, she's obviously, you know, I think it took a while for me to really see the noticeable difference. Not a while, but, you know, like switching fully my routine of, you know, yeah. actually just using the, like the Sturm products, keeping a bit of a system. And that's when I really noticed like the redness was really going away. My skin was really happy, no makeup whatsoever, you know, really making sure I was cleaning. And then I was at a place where I was like, okay, actually my skin looks great. No more makeup. I literally threw away any foundation concealer. And I, even when I have a bit of redness now, I'm like, I just, I look a pimple. I kind of leave it hydrated and notice it kind of goes away. So I think if you do keep up the steps, like you were saying, I definitely seen completely like, I no longer ever use makeup besides eyeshadow if I'm going out, but I really don't put anything that would Same. clog. Little eyeshadow. I also, I don't like mascara and I have to be really careful. I'm so sensitive also to eyeshadows. I cannot use a lot of things because I, you know, I react, my skin reacts. And, um, you know, when you still, see redness or something just put the calming serum on it takes the redness out right away and that's also a product when you have super sensitive skin rosacea redness anything the calming serum is such a it's such a wonder magical serum to use right no i totally agree no i, I think that's probably the one i the hyaluronic serum i use the most and then the second is like the calming just because again the redness but now especially that i'm gonna use it after shaving i'm probably gonna use that one completely the most for sure for sure no, that's perfect. Shivi, is there someone else who wants to speak to us? There is indeed. I think we have Emily on the line. Hi, Emily. Hi. Hi, Emily. How are you? Oh, sorry. Good, how are you? Good. We can't see you yet. Can we? My phone is good. Oh, yeah. I can see you. Ah, there you are. Is it working yet? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Welcome. Hey. So I, I'm a student in a pandemic. Thank you. I'm a student in a pandemic. So that's like really fun. <laughs> and there's a lot of late nights and like bad mornings. Do you have any like, 
products that you you would use in like a really sluggish day where you're just like not having it yes absolutely and <laughs> first of all i'm really sorry because um my stepdaughter also is in the same situation like you and it's the worst i mean it's like so sad you know to not having this experience so i'm i'm really sorry but on the good um that we have like something for you which you might love and this is something which i have the big size because i i use the spa size for me it's the face mask it's my everything i i swear so if you know i i used to fly every day somewhere else pretty much and you would come somewhere and you would be jet lagged and you had a meeting already or whatever you had to just look good and i would just like whatever wherever i went and took a shower and then i put my mask on and the mask i left on like for 20 30 minutes until it really dissolved into my skin and then i start rubbing it off you really peel it off you just peel the mask off your face and you get like a nice massage so your circulation gets enhanced you get like a freshness in your face you get like the most amazing glow and um, it helps to exfoliate it's just the best best product for pick me up and make you feel amazing and you know what i do i use the mask first rub it off and then i put my hyaluronic serum on and my face cream it's it's done you know it's all you need i mean that is really a good a good um product to have for these um occasions um harris what do you think I was just what is yours? Say, your face, the face mask is my favorite thing when I'm hungover. Like I used it this morning because I think, like you said, like Emily, I actually just graduated last year as well from university. So I was doing everything from home for my collection and literally wearing almost like, you know, a hoodie sometimes and my hair in a bun sewing. And I would literally leave the face mask on. I think that's probably one of my right. favorite products that I'm constantly running out of and then harassing the this, this Sturm team that I need more of because it literally gives you for me an instant result of plumpness and you just you actually feel quite cute so if i'm gonna go see my boyfriend or something and i've been sewing and there's air conditioning and it's really drying my skin out i put that on for like even just 10 minutes sometimes because i forget because you know we're young and you know we have a lot going on i noticed a huge difference <laughs> so i completely completely agree the face mask is insane yeah it's the best That's awesome because I had one and I, I just ran out of it and it did absolutely nothing for me. So I was going to ask about a face mask because like those are my favorite things to do. And it's just like I need like products because I'm just, you know, student in a pandemic. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one to start with. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. I think that's all I had. I'm not, I'm not really okay. sure. Let us know how, how it's going and, you know, how you like it. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, my team is always available. So let us know. And so nice to meet you, Emily. Yeah, so nice to meet you. Thank you. Good luck with everything. Good luck, Emily. <laughs> Hang in there. <laughs> yeah. It's so, <laughs> it's so hard. Yeah. It's so hard you know, to be a student right now. I mean, like for every kid, I mean, like every kid has, I think the worst experience with not being able to go to school or to university or it's just tough being homeschooled or mm. missing out on, on school and classes. It's, yeah, that's awesome. it's, it needs to, it needs to get better. It really does. No, it does. It's like all about this like physical interactions with people and like even like getting dressed up and seeing people and then doing everything from your bedroom or sitting in front of a screen it just it's not it's not fair yeah it's like you know during the pandemic like really lockdown lockdown it was you know especially for people like us who travel so much mm -hmm. it was kind of also you know good to get grounded again and come back to you know the the, the basics and family and cooking and all this kind of stuff and, and and just wearing jogging pants and stuff and it's actually you know and everything bad is also something good so I think it was good in that way and then um but I think coming out of it and you know getting a little dressed up again and we opened our store in Miami and that was kind of like the first time I wore a dress again and and it's it, it it feels good it feels good to 
you feel like you're back alive and you know being with others and i think it's really what humans also also need and it's it, i i i yeah i i i'm i'm happy it's it's slowly moving in the right direction no it's i mean we all kind of need it i mean it only got you can only go so much being at home and i remember trying to dress up and like have fun but when you have nowhere to go and no one to see you're a little bit like come on come on so no it's i'm very excited especially as someone who makes fabulously over the top clothes that we can hopefully dance soon and go i mean you know some places you can but we can keep on you know being fabulous and being out there absolutely absolutely and that's why we need your beautiful collection to be tell us a little bit about your collection so we, we talk only about skin we need to also um talk about what else makes us look fabulous so want to tell us a little bit what you're working on and what you're excited about in this collection what you're whatever you can um whatever is not a secret yeah. <laughs> i mean i'm super excited because again pandemic i've literally done my first two ever shows during a pandemic from the internet from computers and instagram so this will be my first physical show in london fashion week you better be here um so i'm going to be showcasing like my first physical show and it's going to be just amazing to show people really like the like the the kind of the grandeur and the theatricality of what it is that I do, that like the hats are gonna be bigger than ever. The flares are gonna be super huge. I can't say too, too much, but I think people are gonna be quite shocked and quite, you know, quite, I think it's gonna be quite fabulous. I think it's gonna be quite a major moment um, and hopefully bringing back a lot of the theatricality to fashion that I think in the lockdown, we all really had to think about, you know, you know, it's less about fast fashion and more about beautiful pieces that last a lifetime that you can pass on to your daughter. Son, yes. And kid. like, it's so important to have these kind of this idea of quality and this um, kind of bespoke fabulous element. So, you know, I'm very, I'm very excited. And like, you know, as anything, you know, you want to feel good on the inside, you want to feel good on the outside and you want to feel good in kind of everything that you are. So I'm quite excited for people to, you know, my clothes are all about celebrating who you are and having a fabulous event to go to or a fabulous evening or a store opening or something, you know, just amazing. So I think it's gonna be really exciting. I'm really, I'm pumped. A lot of work to do, a lot, a lot of work to do, but I think it's gonna, gonna be really exciting. But that's also something you're, um, you stand for sustainable fashion and it's absolutely right what you're saying about you know, pieces you want to hand down to your kids. I have pieces, you know, Charlie's wearing and, you know, even Papa sometimes, you know, it's like yeah. taking stuff from me. It's like so important. I personally, I love vintage. I, I buy vintage furniture. I buy vintage clothes. I, I, I have the most fabulous things. First of all, when you have like, you know, like pieces with a soul, pieces with like some history, you know, it's very unique and it's, it's, it's just, so fabulous to to have like the, the 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 history with it and the charm and everything so i i love vintage stores i'm i'm obsessed actually with everything vintage marcio puce any flea market i i'm i'm it's my my favorite thing to do actually going to flea markets <laughs> not that i'm saying your collection would be like a flea market no, 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 but the history, the storytelling, like, I mean, literally, no, 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 my favorite, when I go to Los Angeles, my favorite thing to do is to go to all the vintage stores, all the thrift markets, the Rose Bowl, like finding, you know, whether it's furniture or pieces, I think it's super important because they all have stories and narratives. And I think, you know, for anyone now doing, you know, demi couture or, you know, made to measure clothes, it's about that story. It's about showing through Instagram, the process, the making, you know, so there's a beautiful, beautiful web of everything. I, I totally agree. I, I also, I, I buy vintage china, I, everything. I have like the most beautiful, um, the, the, the greatest, you know, um, how do you call it? Silverware, how do you call it? I, I mean, like, you can find anything there, uh -huh. like napkins, everything. I just love it. <laughs> so that's cool. Is there anybody else who wants to talk to us about vintage sustainability, skincare, diet, anything? <laughs> Should we? We haven't got anyone at the moment. We have actually had some questions submitted though. So April has asked a question. What is the difference between the good vitamin C serum and the brightening serum? Oh, that's such a good question actually. And um, Harris, do you use both? I use both of them. Yeah, so the good C, so that is a really good 
good one. So vitamin C, actually, and I have to explain that a little more in detail just because it's so important. You know, when when the pandemic hits and I started skin school and lives and everything, everybody was asking me about vitamin C serums, you know, and vitamin C is great up until a certain concentration. If you put vitamin C in a certain form and too high of a concentration to a vitamin C serum, it really bombards your skin and the surface of your skin and destructs your skin barrier, which is so important to our skin as a functioning organ. Yeah, so don't use high concentrated vitamin C. Also, it's really important what kind of vitamin C formulations it is, because if you use l acid, it just only goes on the surface and just aggressively targets our surface. Whereas the vitamin C serum I created the ingredients are formulated in the way the vitamin C is, you know, encapsulated or it comes from the kakadu plum in, in, in Australia and it goes into the skin first and then releases its effect. So it doesn't bombard your outer layer because often people say, oh, I react really, really crazy to vitamin C serum. Well, not to our ones because it has this certain formulations. And vitamin C is actually shown to be extra anti-aging because it rebuilds collagen, it catches free radicals. These two things are the most important things a vitamin C serum does. The brightening or the illuminating part of vitamin C is not the first thing when we think about a vitamin C serum. Also, you think, you know, if you go for crazy vitamin C serum, it scrubs your skin off, different story. And you think just about brightening. It's not really the first thing which comes to mind with the vitamin C serum. But the brightening serum, the brightening serum helps to take off um, the yellow and dark spots, like the pigmentation issues. That is really what the brightening serum, it loosens the agglomeration of these spots and same time illuminate the skin and helps to even out skin tone. So they all do it, but the one, the, the vitamin C serum is more anti-aging, a little bit brightening, and the brightening serum is even out its skin tone and help to get rid of pigmentation and also brightening. So it's like, it's like different um, ingredient science, different um, targets, but it both, you can use them together. Um, it really depends what you're looking for in the first place. Does this make sense? Did you understand Harris? <laughs> I did. I was literally very much, I mean, I'm looking at the products right now. I'm like, okay, but let me see. And then <laughs> maybe it's too many products. You know, I thought, you know, I'm, I'm a doctor by heart. You know, I come from, from, from a medical background. And the way I started my work was I was sitting at the desk, a patient comes in and I ask him, how can I help you? So people come, they have a problem and I give an advice or a treatment or therapy, whatever. So it's like, you know, I have this urge to help with cer certain symptoms, whatever it is. And that is, you know, coming from me being a doctor. So now people came to me, oh, I have pigmentation. I have breakouts. I have, you know, kid skin or rosacea or whatever it is. And I was like, just because they asked me for advice, which products they should use. And I, I cannot recommend anything on the market because I thought they weren't good. There was any, wasn't anything good I liked. So that's why there are so many products. I'm so sorry that there are so many products. You don't need all these products. It's like, if you have breakouts in acne, you use the clarifying line. If you have pigmentation, use the brightening line. If you have rosacea, use the calming. You know, it's not that you have to have the entire collection. That wouldn't be, that, that wouldn't be, you know, necessary. Yes, you have your lip balm, you have your body cream, you have your hand cream, you have all these products. Or, you know, I actually like always to travel with the calming serum because we perhaps with mosquito bites or like the aloe vera. These are the products you always like have with you, although you don't use them every day. But other than this, you just like, you know, pick the ones which are needed for your skin and what you just have. But every problem I can fix really literally. <laughs> love it. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing, you know, I, I, I make skincare for everybody, no matter, you know, no matter what, what, what skin problem, what skin color, what gender, what, you know, which age, whatever, I want to give really a solution to everybody with skin, young, mm -hmm. old, whatever, you know, it's like, I, it's like, I think this is my mission to to have everything we need coming from Sturm. So I, you know, 
I, I, I created now body wash, shampoo, conditioner, mask. I mean, like everything we need in our daily life. Hi, Pepper. And our Pepper, you want to say hi to Harris? Come, come on, say hi. No, no. <laughs> no. So, but that's that's the thing, you know. It's just, it's just, you know. I just like to create the products we all need for every day. So shampoo is coming. I'm obsessed with the shampoo, by the I way. Just obsessed. Said shampoo, and I was like, I mean, you know me and my hair. I'm like, we need. We I know. Need I should send you samples actually. Oh I want God. you to try it because this shampoo and conditioner, whatever it is, it's full of ingredient science. It's nothing bad in there. It's just like, you know, it cannot dry out your skin. It, it takes care of the scalp. It takes care of, you know, every situation we have, you know, if it's like hair grows, it all comes back from, you know, we put so much shit on our hair. Sorry to, to use the term. Exactly. you know with shampoos conditioner there's so many bad things in there and our scalp actually takes a lot on you know actually there's even a diffusion into our system and you know we don't wash it off correctly then we put like styling products and then we straighten our hair then we you know we we dye our hair we blow dry our hair i mean it's so aggressive to the scalp that i I, I, I thought it's really important that we get the cleanest products but with a lot of ingredient science in to address every problem. And so I started using the shampoo and I, I became obsessed. I mean, that that is really fantastic and makes your hair super soft and and and, and like it gets this, um, I mean, it's a little ridiculous to say your hair has a glow, but it kind of does, you know? No, that's not right. I was gonna say, cause I, I, we, we should do skin school when the hair stuff is out because literally- Yes, say, we like, do it. I literally constantly have extensions. I have my hair dyed twice, you know, twice, three times a month for work. I have been like, you know, I've been using the scalp treatment. Actually, I just started. Oh, how good day. is that? How good is the scalp treatment? I love it. I used it last night for the first time. And I literally love it because I have, you know, I dye my hair, we bleach it, and then we dye it red literally twice a month. So my skin is so sensitive on my head. My face is great. My body's great from all your products. But now that I have the scalp treatment, it was so calming and so nice. So I'm super excited because we want glowing hair. We want all of it to be glowing. But you're, you're right. You know, don't you think you appreciate the scalp serum as soon as you put it on? Mm -hmm. You feel, right. you feel, oh my God, I needed that. Don't you think? I, I was like, every time I use it, it's like, it's just, I need it so bad. It's like the spa for your scalp. And, you know, it's worth getting it and trying it out because, you know, if you have itchiness and dry scalp and, and dandruff and whatever it, it is, you know, I get um, messages from people with psoriasis who have psoriasis for 20 years and nothing helped. And all of a sudden they get rid of their psoriasis. It's fantastic scalp serum. I mean, I'm su I'm a big fan. I've only used it once, so I'm. It's gonna become my like date, like my <laughs> my weekly thing for sure. Yes, Charlie. I'm sure you don't want to say hi, no? Because Charlie's like like with wet hair, so <laughs> and, and, and no makeup and, and no makeup. So I look at her. Say, I'm sure you don't want to come on camera. I love Charlie. Meanwhile, her mother sits with wet hair, no makeup. <laughs> Oh, you. I miss you. She miss misses you. you. Miss you. Hi. <laughs> Charlie loves you. Loves you. I love Charlie. I loves you. Yes, Charlie, we all do. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. I'm so happy I got to see you. You as well. It's been such a pleasure. Yeah, and thank you for doing this today. And you know what? Let's do it again. I will send you some um, samples for the hair so you sure. can try. I want to say, I want to get your professional opinion. <laughs> I will give it. You know me. I'm the first person. Everyone's always like, I'm excited because my most asked question is what I use on my hair. And I change it so many times that I've never been happy with anything. So it will now become like this storm, of course. I love it. I love it. You're the best. I give you a big kiss. Everyone out there, take care of your skin the best you can. Hydrate your skin. Never dry out your skin. Love your skin. Let's keep our organ skin and organ and let's not aggressively target it so um that's my advice for today and it worked with harris and um, i'm such a fan and i can't wait for your collection thank you so much <laughs> thank you big kiss i see you soon yeah
I'll see you very soon. Enjoy, enjoy. So much love. Bye, my love. Bye. Bye. Bye.